Hey guys, Anthony here with a new episode on Seller Tradecraft. Basically, I wanted to break down a very, very simple thing that's super important, but a lot of people get confused about when they first start selling on Amazon. So the difference I want to talk about is UPC versus a FNS SKU, right? So a FNS SKU is something that Amazon requires, while a UPC is just something that's just like a general worldwide thing that you see on the back of the different uh, retail products that you have basically like when you see at the store. So what is the difference between a UPC and the FNSQ? So the UPC is, like I said, the standard barcode that you see on the back of a lot of retail stuff. And this is required by Amazon in order for you to create a listing in general on Amazon. So, okay, there's a UPC and the barcode is needed, but what if is a FNSQ, right? Why would I need both a UPC and an FNSQ? So the FNSQ is used by Amazon in order to track it on their internal database because there's tons of items out there and there's tons of UPCs that are being reused, right? So because of all these barcodes that are being reused, they want their own FNSQ numbers in order to really track like your inventory versus someone else's inventory and just to keep it uh, organized on Amazon's end. So the way it works is, uh, as you can see here on the bottom left, this is what a UPC looks like, while on the right hand side, this is what a FNSQ looks like. In general, the way the process of selling on Amazon and how the UPC works on creating a private label product is that the UPC is required for you to create a listing. So when you're creating a listing, um, in Amazon, it's going to ask you like, hey, like what's the UPC for this item? So in order to get the UPC, what Amazon really recommends and is pushing for now is for a GS1 barcode. However, the GS1 barcode is a $250 initial fee plus a $50 annual fee. It does get discounted as the more and more products that are the more barcodes that you get from them. The benefit of the GS1 barcode is that it's a brand new barcode, it's never been used before, and you're gonna be compliant with Amazon. However, this is something I recently just started using. The alternatives to using it, alternatives to getting barcodes are like these other sites that I've used, such as just UPC and nationwide barcodes. So the barcodes that I've used in the past were like used by other Amazon, or not used by other Amazon servers, but have been used. Um, so I use that to create the listing. However, this isn't recommended by Amazon. It is a practice that a lot of Amazon sellers do, uh, which is technically against 2S, so I can't recommend it off the bat. Um, it is something that I have done in the past, um, but going forward, you definitely want to use the GS1 barcodes and purchase those to create a new listing on Amazon for your private label products. So after you create the listing, right, you need the FNS SKU. So the FNSQ, once again, is used by Amazon to clarify which items is yours, um, really understand like what warehouses it goes to, but basically it's just for Amazon's uh, personal need. And you definitely, definitely want to put this barcode on your product packaging or uh, have your factory like put the labels on it. I always prefer to like print it directly on my product packaging because it's a lot faster and it, uh, when you're ordering say like 10,000 units and if you're having someone label 10,000 units, it's gonna just add some extra lead times um, to the product. So if you can print it on your product or you can have it automated somehow to print on your product packaging, then I highly, highly recommend you do that. Um, yeah, so by now you should understand what the difference between a UPC is and an FNSQ. Let's jump into how you create your listing with the UPC and then how you get your FNSQ number. All right, so um, in general, so this is a GS1 website, so gs1.org, it looks like this. Um, but when you're creating your listing, right, you're going to go to like your seller account and you're going to go inside, choose whatever categories you want. Um, for this example, I'm just going to choose these options. And then next, what you want to do is you fill out all this information that's required right here. But where it says product ID is where you're going to be filling in the UPC. So you select UPC, right? Uh, so these other ones are kind of um, used for like foreign countries or different like international barcode standards. For, for the most part, we're going to be focusing on UPC and ours. So click on UPC and then whatever barcode that you purchased from GS1 barcodes, you put it in here, right? 
so essentially, after you fill out all the information, you hit save and finish. You're going to jump back into your Amazon seller account, and you're going to see that it's created. And to pull the FNF SKU number, what I do is I hit print item labels. And when you do go print item labels, it'll take you to a screen like that. And then depending on what your supplier wants or like what kind of files you need, you just hit print item labels, shoots it out. Uh, it gives you a product PDF. And then essentially all you have to do is um, oh, you can change the amount of numbers, right? So say like your supplier needs like 400, you can just hit print that and then they'll give you a new one. And essentially, this is the barcode that you want to put on all of your Amazon private label products, right? Um, anything you're shipping to Amazon, use these labels. If you can, Like I said, if you can print it onto the product packaging, I highly, highly recommend you do that. Um, if you have any questions on how to use GS1 or any of the other barcode websites or trying to just even get your FNF SKU number, please leave a comment in, you know, post your questions in the comments below and I'll get around to it. In the meantime, have a good day. This is Anthony from Seller Tradecraft. See ya.